Hi everybody, thanks for tuning back to this part 2 video on uh, Yamaha V-Star 1100 carburetors. I have another video uh, that showing how to take the carburetors out of the bike. Uh, this one will concentrate on taking them apart and uh, cleaning them, going through them. Not very difficult carburetors to do. So um, uh, please check my other video, subscribe for uh, helpful tips and uh, videos like this one and uh, let's get going. undo the idle adjuster take off the floats the float seats and all the jets Be careful on this, uh, I believe that's a choke choke jet, it's got a little, little spacer like this so don't lose it. Next we loosen up this, this screw right here. You don't have to take it all the way out. And they will look, they will free the uh, pin holding the float ball. And here is your float needle. And underneath, we have another little screw that holds the seat in place. You need to remove that as well. And if uh, it comes out real easy, like this one, this o ring needs to be replaced right here see how dry it is same situation here it came out really easy this one would have been leaking for sure I'm gonna unplug this harness because it's in my way can't really put that back any wrong way it's got a one wire on one side two on the other one is round one is flat we'll put that aside next thing I'm gonna turn the carburetor around and take the top covers off finger over top of it Down here you have a spring that fits into the cover. And your needle that is held down by this retainer over there. If you ever need to change the needle or you want to put a little spacer underneath it, this um, this retainer will just come right off. You turn your needle upside down and voila, there it is. This one has a little spacer right over this. It, it, it fit right in there. It's just because instead of having the screw that is recessed like this one, on, on the other side is a bracket that has a regular screw so this uh, spacer just serves as a stopper so you don't over tighten and crack the cover pull our needle off again and this is basically as far as I'm gonna go into these bodies um, I'm gonna later on drill these uh, plugs out these plugs are for the air and gas mixture screw uh, since this bike has uh, uh, loud pipes, still OEM air cleaner, I want to richen it up a little bit. The customer didn't really want to spend money for the jet kit, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to open this up just slightly, and I'm going to put a little tiny little washer underneath the needle to lift the needle up some, so that'll uh, help his backfiring and uh, 
It'll make it run a little bit better. I want to show you how important it is to keep your uh, parts organized when you do carburetor job. Always do it in a clean environment. All my jets for corresponding carburetors from the top, from the bottom. Next thing I'm going to show you is this must have uh, chemical when you're cleaning your carburetors. You can buy this in Walmart for less than twenty dollars. It comes in this handy little tray. So all you're going to do is take your parts and dump it in there. I'm going to put in uh, all my jets. The seats. The two float needles. It won't hurt the rubber. Uh, and I'm going to put the float balls in there. Look how nasty they are. Okay guys, while all my internal parts are getting soaked and uh, cleaned in my solution, I'm going to get this uh, dirty body a bath outside. Uh, I'm using this purple power cleaner, a uh, little brush and soak it in a little bit, brush it on and uh, rinse it with water. And after that we're going to blow it with uh, compressed air to get all the water out. You don't have to be afraid of... Uh, Getting this stuff wet, it's no problem. Just uh, spray it real good all around. Use the little brush, clean everything up. I gotta use both of my hands, so I'm gonna turn the camera off, get my carburetor cleaned up, and I'll uh, get back to you in a minute. Okay, I got my carburetor body uh, washed. It's, it's dripping wet, so I'm just gonna take my air air gun uh, and blow every everything out okay my carburetor is dry and now we're gonna go and fish our internal parts out of the solution I'm back outside I had this soaking for about an hour. There's no, no need for high pressure here. Just trying to rinse it. Okay, uh, again, clean environment, very important. I'm going to use the compressed air again to clean everything up. Okay guys, now to make sure that all my jets are clean, this is my uh, favorite tool to do the jets and any kind of opening on the carburetor it's basically uh, just the hair out of a, a wire brush your most generic wire brush you take a pliers you rip one of the hairs out and it's small enough to go through all these openings you want to clean everything up make sure everything is open and clean same with the with the idle jet This is small enough so it won't hurt it. Our choke jet. The solution, it's really important because it'll clean the inside of this float needle seat. Because a lot of times there would be a build up there and you can change your float needle, put a brand new one in there and you would still have a leak. I mean, always ideal is to buy all this stuff new, but it's not really necessary. If um, As long as nobody messed with it and didn't scratch it up, all you gotta change is this little o-ring. Um, these flow needles look very good. So um, I'm gonna use a carburetor cleaner. Uh, you can use any brand you like. Spray a little bit on, on, on the rag. I'm just using a paper towel. And uh, I'm going to wipe the tip. And over here, you got to make sure that this little pin, there's a spring in there. 
it has to move freely like this one. Same with the other one. Just wipe it down. You see there's a little you're gonna get a little residue from the rubber. Same with this, my pin is free. I already replaced my uh, my gaskets. These gaskets were trash, so uh, I already got new ones on there. Cleaned everything up. All the jets are ready to go. Uh, so now, with my clean carburetor body, I can start and putting this thing back together. Before I start putting all the jets inside this carburetor, I'm gonna take the piece of the wire brush I showed you earlier, and I'm gonna run uh, run it through a couple places. You're gonna see some openings uh, on here. Make sure that those are clean. Same on the other side for the other carburetor. Here everything is fine except inside right here for the choke. Make sure that open, that's open. See where the wire is? Right in there. Same in the other one. And I think that's all I gotta do with this little wire over here. Oh, there is uh, one here and one there. The rear carburetor has a little bigger main jet because the bike is running leaner in the rear cylinder. So make sure you don't uh, mix the jets up. If you if you get confused, just look at the sizes. The sizes are right up here. And the uh, rear cylinder gets a larger main jet. The idle jets goes down here. I recommend tighten everything up right away. To avoid forgetting something. And now don't forget you got your little spacer. Same on the other side. Okay, next we're gonna replace the O-rings over here when you're getting uh, ready to do your carburetor job so you know you're gonna need to order the the these little gaskets anyway so you can either order it new you can get the whole things as well or um, I always have an assortment box of o-rings replace the other one as well I like to use a little WD-40. Make them go in a little bit easier. You should feel a nice uh, resistance when you're pushing them in. So you know they feel fit nice and snug so they won't leak. Now you got our little screws that hold them in. Next we got our floats and the float needle. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this float needle on the float like so. So it so it's uh it's hanging on there. Uh, and just suspend it down to uh trying to make trying to show you here. Now run the pin under the set screw and tighten it up. 
Make sure everything's moving nice and free. Same for the other side. Hang the float needle on. Turn it. Spend it down. Tighten the screw. Make sure everything's moving freely. Now we're gonna check the the float level. Now the set to float needles. I'm just gonna kind of show you this way. It's you have to do it with the carburetor right side up, and uh, the float will go down. You can see from the side where the float needle is, and you're gonna start closing it up, and you can see in which position the float will close. And you want the carburetors to be about two thirds of two thirds full inside the float bowl. So uh, you can just kind of guess. You know, I work on so many bikes. I just have this uh, uh, unsophisticated method of setting up the float. But basically, what you want is your float to be about right there. I would say two thirds full. Next is our uh, float bowls. Okay, I'm not going to put this wiring harness on just yet. I need to be drilling my uh, air and gas uh, mixture screws. So I don't want them wires in my way, but uh, I'm going to put the other part, the other side of the carburetor back together first. Like I said on this car, on this bike I'm gonna try to uh, richen it up just a little bit so originally this this washer when I took the needle out was on top I'm gonna move it on the bottom which will raise it up some and I and I have one more washer just the leftovers from uh, jet kits you can go and find one in a hardware store just a little washer and I'm gonna put this back together just uh, like I said earlier customer didn't want to really buy a jet kit at the moment so we just trying to uh, make this thing run a little bit richer since it's got uh, open pipes on it Okay, this one is back together. Make sure this is seated in this groove. Last thing you want to do is pinch. Pinch it. Now our spring. Spring fits inside here. I gotta modify my needle on the other side. I remember on this side we had a little brass spacer and the choke hold uh, cable bracket next thing I need to do is put my uh, idle screw back in okay I'm just gonna raise it a little bit that's all you don't want the idle too high we can adjust it after the bike runs so now the next thing I need to do is is drill drill out these two. You want to drill very carefully. You don't want to mess up the top of the the head. You see the the head of the screw underneath it. 
The reason why I always do it with the carburetor being enclosed because I don't want any other filings inside it. I'll take a little bigger. You want to reach this screw over here without messing it up. See, I checked that it was uh, only one and a half turns. I'm going to go uh, three turns on it. So it's one, two, three. So one's done, one to go. Okay, the final thing is our little wiring horn. Okay, next thing what I do before I start putting the carburetors back in the bike, I always bench test them. I uh, got my little IV bottle, fill it up with gas, have the carburetor sitting for 15 minutes or so, make sure there's no leaks coming from anywhere. If you don't have a bottle like that, what you can do is just uh, hook up the lines in the bike, put the gas tank on, don't even attach the carburetors to the bike and uh, let them fill up. Turn the key on, the fuel pump will fill them up, make sure they don't leak so you save yourself a lot of aggravation from putting the whole bike back together and something is not right and it's leaking. Now you gotta take it all back apart. It's a big pain in the butt. So um, anyway, I hope this video helps you. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and uh, see you in the next one. Thanks.